Well, thanks, brother. All right, well, from here down on the beach, we're going to throw it up to Tanya in the actual Sacred Craft Fair. And uh, we're going we're gonna to throw her to the wolves, <laughs> as they say, the shaping wolves, you know. Cute girl in the midst of a hundred surfboard shaping weirdos. Strange things could happen. Tanya. Ow! <laughs> shaping wolves, huh? I guess I might have to get my she-wolf on in here. But yes, Chris, I'm here at the actual Shapers Craft Expo, where all around there's designers, manufacturers, amazing shapers. So, and not to mention, there's going to be shaping demos held by some of the world's best. So let's go walk around and check it out. Hey guys, I'm here with Scott Bass, the Sacred Craft Consumer Expo Director. Wow, that's a long, that's a long title. Scott, tell me a little bit about this event. Yeah, well, Sacred Craft is really about surfboards. It's about surfers that love surfboards. Um, we try to get the manufacturers, the shapers, the surfboard designers together with the people that love surfboards, which is the surfers. So it's really um, a blending of the two passionate uh, parts. Yeah, well this definitely has become such a hit and I hope it stays around for years to come. What do you think about that? No, I'm a big fan of it staying around for a long time and it has been a, it's been sort of a, a sensational hit. You know, a lot of people are, the thing is is that surfers really care about two things. They care about waves and they care about the equipment to ride them with. Definitely. And here at Sacred Craft we can't provide the waves for them but we can certainly provide them with tons of surf craft to check out and to get excited about so that they can go hit the waves. Wow, well, this is such an amazing event and I'd like to thank you so much for putting this on for everybody. So thank you so much. Hey, thank you for, uh, for stopping by and saying hi. I'm a big fan of Transworld Surf. Transworld Surf. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with Hot Rod and Fire Firewire boards. Rod, your boards have been high performance since the get-go, and so many professional surfboard riders ride them. Why are they such good boards? Well, it starts with the shape, and a lot of the materials that we use help progress the shape and make it work even better. Now, we do have a lot of professional surfers. We uh, Taj Burrow being our number one rider, but other guys are picking it up as well, as you've seen. Now, how much do one of these go for lately? Well, surfboards in general are getting more expensive, but we're about 650 or 595. Yeah, that's so not bad. Not crazy. We've lowered the price about $300 since we first started. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm here looking at a beautiful mandala surfboard. What's your name? Uh, my name is Manny. Manny, Manny, tell me about this sleek, beautiful board. Um, this board is a uh, Alex Cops collab board. It's a, it's called a Dark Cloud. Um, it's trying to combine the the best of um, what we like in hulls with uh, what we like with twin fins. So it's just a roll into single concave with a pinched rail, super foiled and weird. <laughs> <laughs> and weird. Now, what kind of waves are these boards good in? Um, these boards are mostly made for the, probably the worst surf in the world. Um, we really like to design boards that almost don't work in anything. So, uh, you know, if you live somewhere where the waves suck all the time, our boards are awesome. Oh, wow, that's so cool you guys did that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're just trying to help people out who just don't have it as good as, you know, people in better places and oh look at that hey guys i'm here with legendary and iconic surfboard shaper dick brewer dick first of all i'd like to say it's an honor to meet you and second of all happy birthday i know you have a birthday around the corner you're right well thank you very much now this year we're honoring your boards in the masters shape off what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for all the shapers that are attempting to replicate your board I, I think it's going to be, because it's ancient history of them having to go back and do things that we did years ago, um, it's, you know, and these shapers have all done these things before. Let's see what they, if they can redo what we used to do. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely going to be a challenge. Now, if you had one piece of advice to give all these up-and-coming surfboard shapers, what do you think that one advice would be? I think it would be to really pay attention to what you're doing not just in shaping but everything in life 
great advice. Well, thank you so much, Dick, and and it was an honor to meet you. Thank you very Perfect. much. Perfect. Thank you. Gosh, this stuff smells so good. Hey guys, I'm here with Randy at Bubblegum Surf Wax. Randy, how's it going? It's going good. We've been slammed. Yeah, it looks like it. Now tell me, you guys have been around for a while, but recently you came out with a new wax. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, actually, we just came out with uh, Rob Machado's Organic Blend. So it's kind of an environmentally friendly blend of organic waxes, and it goes uh, for a good cause. A portion of the proceeds actually go to uh, the Rob Machado Foundation. So uh, we're just trying to help out the environment with uh, what we can do. And who doesn't love that? Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thank Thanks. You so when we talk about surfing, the conversation is not complete without mentioning the movie Endless Summer. And I'm sitting here next to one of the stars of those wonderful Endless Summer movies, Mike Henson. Mike, how's it going? Thank you. Uh, I'm fine. Yeah, the expo treating you well? Oh, yes. This is a great event. Now, over the years, you've been here displaying your own line of surfboards, but this year, it's all about your new book, Surf Rebel, which is an amazing book, by the way. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, it uh, starts from the, uh, when I was born until about 1972, and all the experiences that I could uh, come up with, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, this book is available, where, where can we get it? Because it's a wonderful coffee table book, yeah. and the holidays are right around the corner. I know you're getting a hardback cover. Yeah, we're gonna, well, we have the hardback right now, dear. We have a, uh, we're going to have the um, paperback by December. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So. For, for Christmas. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, and best of luck with your book. All right, well, thank you. Now, I've said a bunch of things here have been amazing, but this is truly amazing. Here we go. Wow. Bruce, yeah. tell me, if you did that with another surfboard, what would happen? If you asked anybody in any booth to do that, they would say no, because it's going to crack. If you drop it, it's going to crack. If you stand on it, it's going to break. So. Gosh, what makes your board so strong? After doing it for X number of years, I figured out all the fine details that it takes to do it. And this is epoxy, but I could do it with our normal 50-year-old construction polyester boards. So. Wow, so cool! The tricks of the trade. The tricks of the trade. Well, there you have it, guys. We got to speak with legendary surfboard shapers, and we got to see surfing's latest innovations. This event really brought together everybody who loves surfboards and the people that make them. Reporting for transworld.com, I'm Tanya Milberg. See ya!